Welcome to Case Catalyst Auto Indexing. It's all about the codes. My name is John Gales and this is part one, codes used in a deposition template. My goal in presenting these videos is to teach you how automatic indexing works and get you familiar with the codes so that you'll be able to create your own customized templates. In the alternative, you'll be able to understand how to use cases, templates that they give you, and make them work for you. At the end, you'll also be able to go through the self-study guide and understand that better to help you along. In part two, I will be going over the codes that we will actually put inside the transcript and we'll be talking about manually entering them using include files and macros. Then in parts 3 and 4 I'll be discussing the same topics with respect to trial templates and transcripts. So let's start with creating our own template. You'll want to start by going to your system files folder Double click on that and look for index template, the folder that will contain those. Double click on that. And then to create a new text file, the shortcut is Control N as in new. And you'll be prompted with an in, uh, create new document box. Just, you can type in the name, whatever you wish. And then you'll be presented with a blank file to work with. Now to speed this along, I've already created a blank template. I've got the sections in here that we want to index, but I have no codes entered. And <clears throat> if we look at the final product, I've got a transcript here. Go to the beginning. You can see I have my index here. It's two pages long. And three sections, examinations, exhibits, and requested information. I think it's a nice simple index, but good looking. And so we'll work with this. I'll close this and go to back to our template here. Now everybody comes at this in a different stage of understanding things. If you've never created a table that you, like you see here on the screen, let me just quickly show you how that's done. I'm going to duplicate this little table here with one row and three columns. So if I click on Edit Go down to table and insert table. You'll be prompted with a little box here. Number of columns. We want three columns. One is already filled in for rows. I click OK. And we have our table. It doesn't look like we want it yet. So if I click inside this first cell on the left, you'll see the cursor blinking. And then I go up to the ruler here and just grab this by holding down your mouse and uh, move this dotted line over to where you want the left margin to be. And then I'll go back up here and move this little line over here and then do the same on this side. And we have our table, simple as that. Now I'm going to erase this table since we don't need this. And then I'm going to go into this screen where I've, I have the same template, but I've actually typed in the codes so that we can see them and look at them and ex talk about them. You'll see that I have my three sections, examinations, exhibits, and requested information inside these tables. The codes that I have bolded are necessary for the index to work. The other codes are for 
formatting and just to make it look nicer. And each section in case catalyst vocabulary nomenclature is called a heading. So we have a heading that for our witness names, we have a heading for our exhibit numbers, and we have a heading for our requested information. So you can't have the same code for all three. So the way CASE handles that is by assigning letters to each heading. When you, we get around to entering these codes, you'll be prompted with a choice of what letter or number you want to use for each heading. I've got A for the witness. I'm using B for the exhibits and C for the requested information. You can use whatever letters you want. That isn't important, but what is what is important is when you get to entering these codes into your transcript, they have to correspond and match what you've done here. Now, the first heading, index heading on A, is going to surround your witness name. And if we go into a transcript here, go down to where I have the witness it's being sworn in, you'll see that I have the witness name in all caps and my examination in all caps. That isn't important right now, but I'll talk about it in a second. Now if I hit reveal codes, you'll see the index heading on A, which matched what we just talked about. The field here is just the name, as you see highlighted. And then index heading off A. So we have an on and an off, like many codes used in Case Catalyst. And everything in between the on and off will be captured by Case Catalyst and put into your template. And then if we go back to the codes here, you see this code next that says initial cap cell. So everything in this cell will be initial capped. So that means the name. So instead of having it in all caps, I want it just initial capped. On the second row, this will be our examinations. The tab is just simply with, hit with the tab key, and I just wanted the examination to be indented. And then all of our examinations will be surrounded with index on and index off codes. And we will use A because that matches our witness's name. So if we go back to our transcript, you'll see that I have the examination index on and then examination by Mr. So-and-so and then index off. So everything between those codes will be put on, put right here. And then I also have the initial cap code to tell case to that I only want initial caps. And then the index page code is pretty easy to understand. It just puts the page number right here. In our next section, you'll see index heading on B. And as I explained, our exhibit numbers will be surrounded with this code. If I go back to I'll go back, let's see, this. if I right click on the number, I can go right to the entry. You'll see the exhibit number is three, and I have an index on B, heading on B, then the exhibit number, and then index heading off B. So whatever number is in between these codes will be 
insert it into my index when it's created. You'll see some hidden text here with the next codes and also the sticky pin. If I click on that, you'll see the index on B and index off B codes that we talked about and the description of the exhibit in between those codes. So everything between the on and off codes will be put in our description column on the index when that's created. I'll go back into the codes. So there we have our index heading on B, index on B, and index page just says what page did that happen on. Now this code here that is not bolded is just a formatting call, code paragraph delta justification. That's a mouthful. What does it mean? And how, how do I get it in there? Well, there's no code that you'll find anywhere in Case Catalyst like this. So the way we get that in there, if I go back to our sample, you'll see my cursor blinking at the left here. I want that centered. So I can go up to Format, Modify Current Paragraph, and then over here on the, under Layout, you'll see Alignment Left. Well, if you get the drop-down menu, click on Centered on Margins, go down and apply that. Now you'll see that my cursor has jumped to the middle go in there and I click reveal codes you'll now see that paragraph delta justification so that's how you get that in to your transcript I'm going to go back to the codes <clears throat> and this, this code here sort index numeric is not too hard to figure out that just means we want our exhibit numbers to be sorted in order. Sometimes you can have exhibits entered, talked about, marked out of order, and that's fine, but you want them in order on your index, so this will do that for you. We get to index on B, we talked about. New line paragraph is just putting a new blank line there. Why do we want that? Well, if we just go back to our to go back to our created index already, we just want that blank line under the description again just for looks. Oops, you know, skipped around here. So not it's not all running together. Go back to our codes. And we have another paragraph delta justification. On this, in this cell, I want my numbers to be right justified, that is aligning to the right of the cell. Again, these are strictly up to you how you want your numbers to appear. The next section is requested information and in this cell, the first code, I have a new line paragraph. So that's, again, if we go back to our completed index, you'll see this just puts that extra line in there so that we're not jamming everything together, just for looks. And the reason I put that on top is because you'll see these dot leaders, these dots, which is called a dot leader. When you create the table, if I go into table and cell properties, you'll see I have this box, extend last line of cell with character, and there's a little period in there. I've got that checked. So that just puts that dot leader in there again just just for looks. This section is called index heading on 
C, and then we have the index on C code right next to it. We don't have separate cells for the two codes here, so we put them in the same cell. And the way that would look in your transcript, go down to that, I can go, go to entry here where the lawyer makes a request for these fee agreements. And if I click this hidden text, I've got index heading on C, cap next fee agreement, and then index heading off C, and then index on C, index off C, nothing in between those last two codes, but they have to be in there. So we put those in all in the same space. Let's go back to our codes. And uh, we have a page code here, so we to put the page number. And then at the end, when you're done, you just want to turn single spacing off if you have that on, so that your transcript is then double spaced. So that is a quick review of our codes and uh, what they look like inside your transcript. So let's go into our blank template and just insert a couple codes here. Now, if, we, if you remember, the first code we want in this cell is the index heading on A. And there's a shortcut for this, but for purpose of this video, I will just use my mouse so you can see where I'm clicking. I will go up to Format Symbols. A box appears. If I type the letter I, I can skip right to the I's. And we're looking for Index Heading On. And there it is. You see this J over here, this capital J. So if you were just to type F4 capital J, that's the shortcut to turn this heading on. I'm just going to double click on this. And you see, well, nothing happened. Well, down here in the lower left, you'll see a prompt. It says enter A through Z or zero through nine. So that's what I was saying before. You get a choice of what you want to use. And we were using A, so now I just press an A. That goes away. And if I go to reveal codes, you'll see now it says, here it is index heading on A. So that's how you get that code in there. The other codes are simp you'll simply find under the format, insert format symbols. So it's just a matter of finding those, double clicking to get those into your cells. On the next line, you see I also have a dot leader on this cell. So I just have a, a tab here and then actually I have two tabs in there right now. I'll just take one of those out. Take it all out and then you see I put a tab in there. And now if you remember we go back here we want to put the index on A. We put the, we've, we've just put the index heading on A. Now we want to put the index on A. So we just do that the same way. Go up to make sure I'm in the right part. Yep. Type the I to get down here. Now we're looking for index on. Double click on that. And that same prompt appears down in the lower left. And we hit our A again. And you'll see that this index on A now appears in here. And simply we want the page here, so we look for index page. There it is here, double click on that. And now our index page code is in here. And we repeat 
these things. I've already put in the paragraph delta justification. And again, just to show you one more time, index. Now we're on, we're on heading B now. So we look for index heading on. There it is. And you'll see that prompt again. Now we want B. We type B. And the other codes are entered just the same way that I've done this. So I don't think I have to waste any time entering every code into our template. You've seen the codes that are necessary and the other codes. <coughs> if you look through the self-study guide, you'll find other codes that can be used and uh, some other examples of templates and how you might want to line up your information to be indexed. For now, we'll end this deposition, and thanks for watching. And next will be video two, part two, which I will talk extensively about how to insert these codes into your transcript. Thanks for watching.